Hello, golfers. Welcome back to JD Golf TV. I'm John Donegan, your coach helping you play better, faster. Today's lesson is on the tree doinks. The simplest, most ridiculously easy way to set up for your chip shots that will help you hit the ball more solidly. So let's get after it. Now, folks, I got bad news for you. There's not enough chipping stuff on the internet. That's the truth. And it's because we're scared, because chipping is a little scary. Where I play golf, we have got super duper tight lies all over the place. And, well, you've got to be able to bounce that club on the ground, maybe not dig in, but you've got to get the bottom edge, maybe not the leading edge. Leading edge cuts like a knife. You ever lay side one or one of those chippies? Well, you get that leading edge into the ground. You have to be exactly perfect with the strike in order to hit the golf ball solidly. But if we can get the golf club to not lean so far forward, so I expose some of the sole of the golf club, I can have a lot more room for error. Okay, using less forward shaft lean is a wonderful thing. However, today's lesson is on controlling the bottom. Now you remember the law of the circle. By golly, uh, we're going to move the bottom of the circle forward with three and a half easy steps. So we go like this. Doink. I think I learned this from the noted short game wizard, James Seekman, many moons ago. Right out of the sternum. Turn it over your front foot, not past your front foot, just so that I can see it right over my shoes. Just a little bit open. Bow down in that direction, then turn your head back. So to you, it's going to feel like you are leaning like this. And you're going to say to me, Dunnigan, I cannot hit a golf ball like that. You're an idiot. This feels like absolute you-know-what. And then I'll snap a quick picture on my phone, and you go, oh, my gosh. That's what it's like to stand straight up. And the reason that is, is you have likely – grown accustomed to setting up like a driver for your chip shots. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What just happened? Now, you know you've done it. I just took my circle and tilted it back this way. Notice how the back end drops down. I just moved the low point of the circle backward. I see this all the time. And I see it like this, too. Because you have to have your weight forward to chip, correct? So people go like this. They stick their hiney toward the target, and they tilt their shirt buttons backward, Still moving the low point backward. The low point of this circle follows your shirt buttons around, right? Follows around like a shadow. So get the shirt buttons open to the target, slightly left. Not the feet necessarily, not the hips necessarily. Shirt buttons oh, open to the left, over the front shoe, and down. They're in front of the ball and a little bit left of the golf ball. It'll take you about 20 of these to get it. Doink, doink, doink. You'll see that my feet are down near touching. They can be a little bit wider, but having the feet real close together helps me control the bottom of the swing arc once again. All about the circle, isn't it? Okay, once again. You see my feet? Well, my foot is flared out, but my feet are not wide open. I don't see the reason why we have to be wide open. I just don't. I just don't. Okay, I can swing the golf club any direction I want from here. I can swing it outside in, straight inside out from here. And I can do the same thing from here too. Doesn't matter. But this, doink, 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 turn the head back. And now when we swing, I feel, oh my goodness, I look straight up and down. Oh my goodness, how can it be? And then I can just basically take her back and turn through. And I have a chip shot. I love track, man. You can hear the water. Here we are at Adair Manor in Ireland, uh, 2027, home of the Ryder Cup. Good golf course. I actually was there. Believe it or not, I was on this golf course during my honeymoon in Ireland. We got married on St. Patty's Day, the wonderful Mrs. Dunnigan, my boss. And we went to Adair Manor on our first day. I actually had a hole in one at Bally Bunyan during our honeymoon. Go figure. Okay, doink, doink, doink. 
Yep, feels weird, looks normal. It's just so easy to do this, but it doesn't work. My weight is a little bit left, not much. I swing back, and I basically let the club fall on the ball. Decent chip shot. Okay? And I'll give you one piece of advice. When you swing this downswing, the worst thing you can do is over-accelerate. The idea of take the golf club back. You want to learn how to yip it? Here you go. Take the club back short and accelerate through. That little violent acceleration causes all manner of problems. You are far better off to swing the club up and basically let it fall to the ground. Yay. I hope that makes a lot of sense. May I give you one more hint? Watch for anything you do that tips the circle backwards or lowers the circle. Hey, right? So if I tip it backwards, listen to this contact if you can. There, I tipped it backward already. Or I could do this and tip it backward during the stroke. Oh, you heard it. I hit about this far behind the golf ball. If it wasn't on a mat, I'd be dead. Or the other thing is, so I moved the low point of circle backwards during the stroke. I tilted the wrong way. Two, is there anything that I do that pushes the circle into the ground? And I do see quite a bit of this. We've got a good setup. And then we give it this treatment because we're in a panic mode. If we come, oh, baby, that's not going to be very good. Or give it this one. You've seen it. Okay. Once you understand the law of the circle, you can go, ah, ha, ha. let me get on the video real quick. I'm getting this too deep. And by the way, the beginning of the yips, and I've had them, is fat shots. I swear to you, it's coming from fat shots. What I've seen in my own students, when the people come with me with a yip problem, invariably it's the fat shot. Then they start sculling it. But the sculled shot across the green, disaster, that sculled shot is your brain going, man, I'm trying to save you. You keep doing something that puts your circle way down into the ground or way behind the golf ball. I'm trying to save you by pulling my arms up because your brain ain't dumb. Well, you want to make sure that you look real quickly to see if there's anything during the stroke that lowers the circle or tilts it backward. Okay? It's really important. It's so simple. Once you do discover the cause, then you can iron out some kind of different motion that doesn't allow you to tilt backward. And, oh my gosh, now all of a sudden I can start letting the club hit the ground again. So when you do this correctly, if you do get set up correctly and you start to hit the ball thin, let's see if I can do it for you. Well, okay, that was not that thin, rats. You start to thin a little bit, then you can let your arms relax more so the club can fall to the ground. And I do that with people a lot. I just have them just drop, swing back, drop the club down so that they get some of the tension out because we've eliminated the cause of the horrible miss. That chunk, you know, you hit it this far, you know what I'm talking about. Eliminate the cause of that, then you can relax more, but you have to be encouraged. Your brain has to know that you're not going to chunk the poop out of this poor golf ball anymore before it'll let you relax more. Get it? Okay, get after it.